This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Let's now have a look at finance leases. So remember that when we have a finance lease, it's the lessee, the person using the asset, who bears the substantial risks and rewards of using that asset, isn't it? So the risks and rewards are transferred from the less or to the lessee. Okay, it's the person using the asset has those risks and rewards of ownership. So therefore, we're going to go through and look at finance leases, first of all, from the lessee's perspective. So the person who is using the asset. And remember, when we're looking at the lessee's accounting based on a finance lease, what we're considering there is we're looking, aren't we, at ownership. Okay, so legally, we do not own it, but in substance, which is what we like to account for in the world of financial reporting, in the world of substance, in substance, we do have ownership of that asset. Essentially, we control that asset over the lease period, don't we? Okay, so if that's the case, uh, the way in which we go through and account for it is in a four step manner. Uh, so the first step is to go through and record the asset and set up the corresponding lease payable. Uh, so instead of it being an owned asset, we will categorize it as a leased asset in the financial statements. Still there on the property, plant and equipment, but there would be a separate disclosure note that says of the above PPE, X million relates to leased as opposed to, to owned assets. OK, uh, so still shown in PPE, but with just an, a disclosure note showing that it is leased as opposed to owned. Uh, the key bit there is that when we go through and capitalise the asset, that is at the lower of the present value of minimum lease payment and fair value. Uh, so the minimum lease payments uh, includes any, any deposit, doesn't it? And we discount that all back to, is it present value? Uh, and we go with the lower, don't we? Okay. Uh, you then depreciate that asset and you depreciate that asset over the shorter of the lease term and the useful life uh, because it's over the shorter of those two that, that we get the benefit, isn't it? Uh, if the lease term is shorter, that's whereby we get the benefit, isn't it? Uh, if the useful life is shorter, that's whereby then we get the benefit, isn't it? Okay. Uh, it's usually that the lease term is shorter than the useful life, or they're very, very similar anyway. Okay. Uh, steps three and four are pretty closely related because they're to do with the, the payable. Uh, and you can do them either way around. It depends upon how things are set up within the question. Uh, first of all, you then record the lease payment. So you credit the bank and debit the payable. Again, just be careful. They are either in advance, so at the start of the lease period, or in arrears, at the end of the lease period. And then what you do there is you record the interest on that payable. Uh, we're now at P2 level, so you're unlikely to see any sum of digits we're going to be using there, isn't it? The actuarial percentage, which is essentially the rate that is implicit in the lease itself, isn't it? Okay. Excellent. Uh, and again, when you're recording that interest, you debit the finance cost credit, the payable, don't we? Uh, and to go through there and records, is it step three and is it four? Remember, you need your finance lease payable table, isn't it? OK. There we go. Excellent. So just to go through, refresh the old grey matter. Let's have a look at the example that we have there on lessee accounting for finance lease. And it says demonstrate how the lease will be accounted for in the financial statement. So once again, SFP, profit or loss uh, over here, is it a five year period? OK. Uh, it says on the 1st of January 2015, so that's at the start of the year, uh, per entered into a five year finance lease of machinery. Uh, the machinery has a fair value of $11,000 and a useful life of six years. OK. Uh, so if the useful life is six years, and if there is a five-year finance lease, then the shorter of the lease term and the useful life here is five years, isn't it? So we're going to depreciate it over the five-year period. Uh, we know what the fair value is. It says that that's 11, but we need to capitalise it at the fair value if that is the lower of the fair value and the present value of minimum lease payments. Uh, it says the annual lease payments are $2,000 per annum uh, with the first payment made on the 1st of January 2015. So is that at the start of the lease period? So that is payment in advance, isn't it? OK. And there's also a non-refundable deposit uh, of 1000 was paid at inception of the lease. So uh, 
when we're looking at the start of the lease payable, we also need to consider that deposit that is therefore paid. Okay. Uh, the rate implicit in the lease is 5%. So that's the actuarial percentage that we're going to use. And the present value of minimum lease payments is 10092. So we're going to capitalise the asset. Is it there at the 10092, aren't we? Because that's the lower of the 10092. And is it there at $11,000? Makes sense, doesn't it? Uh, the payments are in advance. The actuarial rate that we've got is 5%. So away we go. Uh, let's grab ourselves a separate page of paper. Uh, let's go through there and head it up. Uh, so we can look there at the statement of financial position. We can look also at the statement, is it of profit or loss? On the SFP, we have, is it property, plant and equipment? And we also have our finance lease payable. And then linked to those with the PPE, we have depreciation, don't we? And on the finance lease payable, we have our finance cost, don't we? Okay. Uh, PPE, we capitalise, is it at the 10092? And then we depreciate, is it that 10092 over the five years, isn't it? Uh, so that gives me depreciation of 2018. So to work out the PPE, uh, you have, is it there, 8074. So essentially, I've started half of step one there, and then step two is the deal, isn't it, with the depreciation okay and then i've used that depreciation debit the expense credit accumulated depreciation on that ppe okay uh, in terms of the finance lease payable and the finance cost that's going to require is it a, a separate working which is going to go through there and look at our finance lease payable table so we can look at our year so is that the say the 31st of december 2015 and then we have our brought forward, isn't it? Now, just be careful on the brought forward. Because on the brought forward, we start off with the 10092, don't we? But I think if memory serves me right, we paid a deposit, didn't we, of $1,000. Let's just double check. Yeah, a deposit, non-refundable, was there paid, was it, of $1,000. So you credit the bank, debit the liability. So your starting point is there as 9092 okay payments were in advance so you've got your cash payment that you make immediately uh, and the payments in advance were there as two thousand dollars per annum so that gives me my outstanding capital balance is it of 7092 and then you have your interest. Now, the interest, I think, was it at 5%. 7092 times by 0 0.05 gives me the 355 as your interest. And then your carry forward figure, 355 plus 7092 gives me 7447. Okay. Uh, so what you've got there is that the interest is 355. So that goes to the statement of profit or loss. And the finance lease payable was 7447. There we go. Uh, if you wanted, you could go through and split the finance lease payable into current and non-current. You're not going to see anything like that in the, in the P2 exam. It's highly unlikely, uh, but if you wanted to, remember the rules that we had is that you look at the final payment in the following year. So 7447, the first thing that that pays off is 2,000 of it is paid off immediately. So that gives me 5447, and you can stop, can't we? Uh, because the number that you have that is immediately to the right, that is the non 
current liability, which is by 447, and the 2000 is therefore the, the current liability. The difference between the total liability of 7447 and the non current, so the current liability is there, is it as 2000. Okay, so if you wished, as I said, you don't have to. You could split it, non-current liability, current liability, the current liability is the 2000, and the non-current is the 5447, okay, there you have it, excellent, uh, provided that you can do that, you're not going to have any problems uh, within any computation aspect within a finance lease question at P2 level. But uh, at P2 level, you tend normally to, to go through there and not have to do the numbers on a finance lease. You more than likely have to go through there and discuss whether or not it's a finance lease or whether it is an operating lease as part of a discursive aspect of question two or question three. Uh, so that's it for the time being in terms of finance leases and looking at it from the lessee's perspective. Uh, in the next video, we'll go through and look at finance leases, but we'll then look at it from the lessor's perspective. So until then, that's goodbye for now.